well preserved, with nearly a full ounce of gold, with so few marks, almost as if they were struck, ejected from the press, and before they fell into the bin, again, it's like you caught them on a velvet pillow. And then you preserved them since 1923 for this last 100 years. An offer like this rarely comes around. $3,995. This is truly miraculous. 1923 piece, St. Gordon's Gold Double Eagles, that shouldn't exist in this condition. These coins are truly national treasures. They're part of our heritage as a country. Please get one of these stunning Gold Double Eagle coins while they're available. We have a limited number. We started with 90. Our pack salespeople sold over 30 before I put a kibosh on it, so to speak. You know, I wanted to offer the rest for our viewers tonight. We had almost 60 to start. We still have people calling in on this. Um, once these are gone, that's it. This is a really rare date. The last time I gave a presentation on 1923 P's in this condition, it was at least five or six years ago. And I didn't have over 50. I had, I think maybe about a half a dozen. This is the type of heirloom that you want to pass on to your kids and grandkids. The most stunning coin ever produced in American history. This key date, most stunning coin produced in world history. A coin you can be proud of. A crown jewel of the American coin renaissance era of the early 1900s. I hope you're able to take advantage of this numismatic opportunity. Thank you for watching and please do yourself a favor, get at least one, but if you can swing two, get yourself two. This coin, I guarantee, will be very, very good to you. Thank you for watching. Hello, welcome to Rick's U.S. Coin Show. Rick Tamaska and Kimberly Tamaska here, folks. And have we got a collector special for you? This is a collector special of collectors' specials. This is, a, a, first of all, it's a very important series in U.S. numismatics. It's one of the centerpieces of my next book, which I've been really resumed working on. Uh, you know, the, with, with the, starting up the TV show over the last couple of years, it's taken a lot of my time, but we've got all those bricks in place, and I can focus on this book, and I've been writing away, and it's a thrill to be able to work on this book on the United States proof coins. It's, uh, it's uh, something that's, uh, it's my dream, really, my dream. I love writing about these things, giving the information to you folks, sharing it with you folks. It's what collecting is all about. The collector special I have for you today, folks. First of all, to appreciate the rarity of these coins. These were proof coins struck at the old Philadelphia Mint. These are the last coins struck at the old Philadelphia Mint. Uh, proof coins are uh, meant to represent the state of the art. They're meant to re represent the finest possible examples of a coin that the Mint's able to produce given the technology of the day. And I emphasize that last phrase, the technology of the day. Because the technology of the day is extremely important when it comes to appreciating the quality of the proof coins I have for you today. Now, again, you've got commercial struck coins, coins struck for commerce, the kind of coins we used to buy things with. And here's a chart that shows you the, the mintages of the coins we have today, which are Washington Quarters in proof condition. The Washington Quarter series in proof condition. And you can see in proof condition how many fewer Washington Quarters were struck in proof 
than struck for commercial use, especially when you get down into the 60s. You see how the mintages began to increase uh, uh, in, in proof condition, also in mint state condition. 1964, they struck over a billion Washington quarters for commercial use. Uh, in proofs, they struck almost four million, which was a large number for proof coins. But you, you go into the 50s and earlier, the numbers were one-tenth of that when you get to 1955. Um, and that is pr primarily because of uh, the economics of the time, folks. Uh, if, if you uh, you know, know your history, you know we were coming out of World War II. We had a, young, a lot of young families that were you know, just accumulating wealth. And they didn't really have money back then in the early mid-50s to spend on their passions, on, on their hobbies. But as you got into the late 50s and early 60s, as, as this middle class became established, you know, you saw people buying TVs, you saw, you know, owning two cars in a lot of cases, color, color TVs, you know, home ownership. And so many collectors, you know, were able to afford their passion, which was coin collecting. So that's where you saw the mintages for proof coins increasing in the, in, in the late 60s. Now, the thing is, though, the technology back then, these coins were struck at the Philadelphia Mint, these proof coins. Uh, again, these proof coins are struck off of highly polished dyes. They're individually fed into the dyes. They're double struck under higher pressure. Then they're individually handled. They're not allowed to abrade with any other coins once struck. Well, commercial strikes, the, the dyes don't receive any kind of special treatment. They're struck once. Once struck, they're dumped into bins where they abrade with the, uh, other coins. So there's a big difference in the quality. Now, these Philly coins, though, folks, I mean, first of all, take a look at a modern proof set, which Kim has here. This is, I think, a 1991, Kim, 1991 proof set that you have. Nowadays, folks, these, uh, the proof coins are, are struck at the San Francisco Mint, and the technology today is state of the art. You know, when I say, you know, the, the proof coins represent the finest possible quality given the technology of the day, well, the technology of the past 30 plus years is state of the art. And these coins are state of the art. You are guaranteed, when you buy a proof set, you are guaranteed of getting five superb proof coins in high grade. These probably grade proof 68, proof 69, maybe even proof 70. You might even get a proof 70 in there, which is the highest possible grade. Back in the Philadelphia Mint days, folks, though, proof coins were pretty much made the same way they had been made back in the early 1800s. They didn't have this technology at the old Philadelphia Mint. And when they shipped them, they shipped them in the cellophane packaging in these paper envelopes. Here's a, an original proof set from the old Philadelphia Mint era. I've got a couple of them. Here's a, a 1956, so they even shipped them like this, third class mail. And uh, it was, it was um, you opened it up, and the coins were housed in these cellophane envelopes, which were pliable. And you could see being pliable, that meant the cellophane could abrade against the, the coin, which meant it could hairline the coin, which lowers the grade of the coin. So that was just one of the problems. But even these sets, folks, have gotten so scarce. I've got here. Here's, here's, a, here's an original 1959 proof set in, a, in an envelope. This is how they're supposed to look. But even these, these sets, as, as damaged or impaired as they are, as you can see, uh, this half dollar has some serious toning issues on it, even these are rare. Nowadays, I'm seeing more and more of these kinds of 1959 proof sets. You take a look at these here. Take a look at this 1959 set. It says Treasury Department, 1959 in the corner there. It looks pretty much the same. The words are the same, but compared to this original, how come the paper has such a different color? How come this looks so much fresher? Does this look like a 55-year-old plus envelope? And the answer is, it's not. Nowadays, they make so many of these sets, and they're basically counterfeit, counterfeit sets, where they make it to look like an original mint product. And you see these offered a lot on eBay a lot of times. And even the uh, inside, where it's an original 1959 set, has a certain kind of cardboard with, 
a letter that comes with it, and um, here's the little note that comes with it. But you can even see the, uh, the toning on the cardboard verifying the age of this material, whereas this counterfeit set is just, has just this, you know, cut out cardboard, which is obviously a not mint, a mint product. And then when you get the cellophane envelope, this is easy, easy to see that it's not an original mint cellophane envelope. The, the corrugating, the, the, the uh, texture of the seal around here is not original mint. This is a counterfeit set. Now, why do they do that is the question. Why would they do that? These are actually original proof coins. These are proof coins. But why would they take the time? Why would they take the time to make them into a lookalike set? Well, the answer is simple. is because these particular coins are very low grade. Now, now they look nice. They look nice, but I'm going to cut one of the. I'm going to cut the 59 and a half out because it's the biggest coin in this set. And right here in front of your eyes, why would it be in this envelope? And when we look at it, I'm going to do it even without a halogen light. If I could tilt it at the right angle, you'll be able to see all kinds of scrapes in the field that in in the envelope weren't really that obvious. Take a look at this. You could see in front of his face, in back of his head. Now I just cut this out of there. Now that is why these coins were encased in these envelopes because they're very low quality. This is probably about a proof 63, okay? And the quarter, dime, nickel, penny—they're all the same. They're they're low quality, and that's what so that's what people are doing. They're buying these coins cheap because they're obviously the lowest quality proof coins. They're putting them in this packaging and selling them for you know as an original sets. So watch out for that. The coins I have are proof 60. Eights. This is an amazing, amazing deal. I want you to take a look at these folks. This is going to be a short presentation. This is a monumental collector special. Here's what you're going to get. You see these coins. We have to go through thousands and thousands of sets to find a quarter. And maybe, Kim, if we can get a, just a hand shot of just the 61, I guess. Just pick one up there, 61, 62, 63, or 64, any one of those. Yeah, take your pick. They're all equally superb. One point from the highest grade. But to the naked eye, you look at the close-up, this coin looks flawless. You know, I mean, to me, I can say, why not proof 69? I don't see a hairline or a spot on it. Absolutely superb. Now, understandably, you look on eBay, these coins go for good money. I mean, to get a proof coin from this early era, this early era, they haven't graded that many folks. Here's the total population, the total population of these coins in proof 67 and proof 68 grade. And you can see how few have been graded. Sixty-four, you get an improvement in quality. And there you could see the proof 68 number jumps from 1,300 the previous year to 3,500 for the 64 year. That was the last year these coins were struck at the Philadelphia Mint on a 90% silver planchet. That's the other thing that's important to understand. These are the last of the proof Washington quarters struck on 90% silver planchets at the old Philadelphia Mint. Now, you see a few of these. Here's a 64. You know, I'm searching around, looking all over on eBay for these. Here's one that was in proof 66, the most common date up there. There's one for $61. Here's one in proof 67 in an Anax holder. For $89, here's one in proof 68. Proof 68, $100. You go to the next earlier date, here's a 63 in proof 67. 
just in Proof 67, a tougher date than the 1964. The, you know, all the dates, you know, the 64 is the easiest of all these dates to get in high grade. 63 and earlier, they get considerably tougher. Here's what I got for you folks. Take your pick of these. Take your pick of these. The 1961, the 1962, the 1963, or the 1964. Take your pick. You can own any one of these. Again, the 1964, you, you see dealers selling them for $100. 61, 62, 63 might be $150, $200. Take your pick. Again, we do all the work. We find the coins. There are no middlemen here. I don't buy these already graded from some dealer who bought it from another dealer. Okay, we did the work and submitted the coins ourselves to cut out all the, 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 the middlemen to give you these kinds of prices. This is where we get a lot of dealers calling in on these because these are, in fact, what you could say below wholesale type prices. But this is my specialty. This is why I write books on it. This is why I'm working on another book on these coins. $35 a coin. Take, pick any one of those Washington quarters, 1961, 62, 63 or 64, only $35 a coin. And if you want a second piece, a second piece, you, you get a different date. You can get a second coin, a different date, also just $35 a coin. And if you want three, a third date, you get a, say, a 62, 63, and 61. Third date, only $35 a coin. And then if you want the fourth date, say the 64, only $35 a coin. In other words, all four coins for only $140. $140. Now, we get to some of these earlier dates. Kim, if you could show us that pop chart one last time. This is where they get, start to get tougher. You see, the Mint had a real problem from 1958 through 1964, folks, uh, at the proof facility when it came to making silver proof coins. And that was the problem of what we call milk spots. And uh, milk spots, we call them milk spots because they're white spots you find on these proof coins. And they come from improper or incomplete washing on the coin blank before it went into the dye. All these coin blanks, the silver blanks, went through a soap bath. And they were supposed to wash all that soap residue off the coin. Unfortunately, from 1958 to 64, whoever was working at the, the, uh, the, in the cleaning facility wasn't washing all the residue off the blanks. And as a result, a large percentage, in some cases a majority, of those silver blanks that went into the dye with that soap residue still on the coin, when that dye came down with 100 or 200 tons of pressure, that residue was struck into the coin. Okay. Um, we have to show them the pops. Yeah, the pops is what we want them to see. So you look at those dates. The 60, only 1,668 graded in 67, but only 934 graded in 68. The 58 is the toughest, only 771 coins. Now I've got something I'm going to show you really quick. Really quickly, this is a box. Many of you have seen this box before. This is an original unopened 1958 proof sets. And a lot of times when you hear that, you know, they're not original sets. They're these counterfeit things. But these were original sets. You look at these, they're original. Original sets. And I, I cut around 15 op of the sets open, and every one of the silver coins had these milk spots on them, every single one of them. I'm going to do one right here in front of the camera. I do this every once in a while, and you folks who have been watching my show for, for uh, a year or more have probably seen this before. And every time I open one or two of these for a presentation, I'm done. I've opened just about half the sets by now. I have about, looks like about 50 left. And I open it up here. and. <laughs> Kim, just show them. Uh, uh, you can, it's easy to zoom in on the half dollar here. I just cut this one out. It's easy to zoom on the half dollar. It's the largest coin. Even through the cellophane, you can see the spots on that half dollar. 
Take a look at that. And again, those do not come off. But folks, and here's some quarters from the same group. Here's a 58 quarter that I cut out. Kim, if you want to just take it out there and, you know, one side may look great and then you flip it over and all of a sudden you see a milk spot. That look, part, side looks, now you do see a spot right there by the rim at around 4 o'clock, but it's pretty small, but that certainly would kick it out of proof 68 grade. But then you look at that huge spot around 8 o'clock on the reverse. Again, those do not come out. That, that would make the coin about a proof, you know, proof 63 maybe. So when you look at the population numbers, folks, that's the problems you see. For those dates, 58 to 64, 60, the 60, 59, 58, those are the three toughest dates. The 61, 2, and 3 have milk spot problems as well. But they had pro higher proof mintages, so you have, have a larger pool of proof sets to find nice coins from. But you get to 1960, and the mintage was about half it was in 61, and 59 is about 500 fewer, 1,000 fewer than the 60, and the 58 had less than a million. And that's why for the 58, only 771 graded, while the 1956 and the 55 have all about twice as many graded in 68 simply because they did not have the milk spot problem, even though they had lower proof mintages. But those early dates, folks, those early dates are especially valuable. You know, you get the 1955 in any grade, in any grade, because of the low mintage, it has tremendous absolute rarity, only 378,000 struck. There's one in proof 67 for about $79. Here's, here's one in proof 68, $160. Here we go. So we got the first four dates, $35 a coin. The 1961, 62, 63, 64, take your pick, $35 a coin. Now you'd expect the 60 to be a, at least 50% to 100% more in price. $35 is already a great price. But if you want to get the fifth coin, the 1960, folks, it's also going to be $35 in the entire set. You get it as a set, it will be $175. Okay, I, I cannot offer it separately because we get to these earlier dates and I have a really limited quantity of some of these early dates you see here in proof 68 condition because of all the issues associated with the, with the minting of these coins. So you get the fifth coin, this is at 1960, it's only $35 additional. That's $175 for the five coin set. Now we get to the nine coin set. If you want to include the 56, 57, 58, and 59, nine coins, you'd expect it to be well, for each additional coin, at least $70 to $80. I mean, the 58, the 59, You'd expect, in proof 68 condition, you figure it'd be $200, $250, folks. Again, we did the work. When we uh, do the work and find the coins and, we're, and we can keep our costs low, we can pass that on to you. We've got the nine coin set. Are you ready? The nine coin set, $299 for the 1956 to the 1964, the last of the silver proof washing quarters and proof 68, $299. And finally, I've got my 10 coin. Blow the doors off on this one. I mean, here we come. Nowhere will you find a set of Washington quarters of this quality at this price. This is what Rick's U.S. Coin Show is all about, offering you great numismatic opportunities, folks. How would you like to own the entire 10 coin set for only $32.90 a coin in Proof 68. $32.90 a coin. In other words, $329. Call in now. $329 for this entire 10 coin set in Proof 68 condition. I have limited quantities of these because of the difficulty of those earlier years. 
the earlier years being 1960 and earlier in this kind of extraordinarily high grade proof condition. This is an enormous, enormous numismatic opportunity. Here you have a major series, the Washington Quarter Series. To find these coins in proof 68, to get the entire set for only $329, only here on Rick's U.S. Coin Show. Just absolutely, absolutely breathtaking set. We are so very proud to be able to offer this set, you know, again, through our hard work, through our efforts. This is what we love to do, you know, when we're willing to put in the time to go through the thousands and thousands of sets. When we, we get, when we're, when I'm offered proof sets all the time, and most of them, like you see, are garbage. But if you work really hard, which we really do, folks, we work really hard to go through all of these sets, and occasionally we find the diamond in the rough, and we put it aside, and you get approved 68, and we're able to offer it to you today while we have them. Call in now. We've got a queue on this. We've got a queue. We've got a lot of folks calling in, but call in now. I've got enough for all of those who are, if you are waiting online, we, I have made sure I had enough to satisfy the people who are currently holding online. I, I will cut it right at this point. If I, if I do this presentation 10 minutes longer, then I can't guarantee we'll have, all this, uh, have enough sets. But if I cut it right here for everybody that's currently online, you will be guaranteed one of these sets, one of these 10 coin sets in proof 68 condition for $329. From Kim and I, thank you for watching this collector special, this very special collector special presentation. Hello, fellow collectors. Welcome to Rick's U.S. Coin Show. Rick and Kimberly Tamaska here. If you've just tuned in, uh, we just had a, a presentation on the 1955 to 1964 Washington Quarters, uh, um, where we offered individual coins and the entire set, 10 coin set in proof 68 condition, for $329. Now, in that presentation, I explained what Washington Quarter or what proof coins are. Uh, and this series is such an important series. It's going to be one of the central series to the next proof book I'm working on. This next proof book is going to pick up where my first proof book left off. It's going to cover not just the 1950 to 1970 coinage, but it's going to go all the way through the Eisenhower dollars. It's going to go back into the Walking Liberty Half series, the, the Morgan Dollar series in proof. It's going to include you know, uh, we're going to go back to the Civil War era when we're talking about proof coins, especially, particularly, we're going to focus on the silver proof coins uh, uh, from the U.S. Mint. Um, and this exciting, to be able to offer this kind of Washington Quarter set for that kind of price, folks, again, I had to emphasize the only way we're able to do this is through our hard work. Uh, Kimberly, Caitlin, and I, uh, when we occasionally uh, are offered some nice collections of original proof sets. We have to go through thousands and thousands to find, you know, a single coin that might grade proof 68 um, for, uh, to fill the, to complete these sets. Um, and there are so many sets that have already been picked through. Now we go through thousands and thousands of sets. We don't buy the sets already graded from some dealer who had them graded, and which we're essentially paying services, his services, when, when, when we buy them and, and then have to tack that on to the price we offer it to you. It, it's our work. And so we cut out all the middlemen and that's where we're able to offer that great, great price. Now out of all those sets we go through, occasionally we get really fortunate. Occasionally. 
and it's like one of those aha moments, I've struck gold, like Eureka. Wow, look at this one. Look at this one. This might even be a proof 69, and you look at it, and we study it under a halogen light, under a magnification, we can't find a flaw on it, and you get enough of those coins where we submit them to NGC, and well, a lot of times they don't grade proof 69, they'll grade proof 68. Because maybe, may, you know, they'll see a little tiny flaw under magnification that, you know, we, we missed. And it could be the tiniest little imperfection that you can't even see with the naked eye. But we do get enough of them where eventually we're able to ha offer a, com you know, a complete set of these in Proof 69. And I have a handful out of all of those 1955 to 64 uh, coins that we looked through. We have a handful of sets that we can offer that we have in Proof 69, which is the highest matching grade you can complete this set in. You cannot complete this set in Proof 70. They do not exist. These are the last proof coins struck at the old Philadelphia Mint on silver planchets using that old technology, that old style packaging. And this is the ultimate in terms of the technical proof grade. I, I only have a, a very few of these sets Take a look at this uh, set that we have on display for you folks. The entire 10 coin set. Now if you called in earlier and bought a Proof 68 set and would like to upgrade it to a Proof 69, just call right in, no problem. We will upgrade you, you know, doesn't cost you anything, no problem at all. I do not have that many. And when you see the populations of these coins, you will understand why I don't have that many. Every coin, proof 69 from 1955 to the last year of the Washington Quarter Series, struck at the old Philadelphia Mint on a 90% silver planchet, the 1964. In 1965, the mint switched to a clad planchet with no silver content whatsoever. And in fact, I have a 1965 quarter. It happens to be a special mint set quarter, but Kim is going to put it in front of the camera for you to see the difference between that coin. Uh, it has a slightly different, it's got a kind of a grayish cast to it. And that's what your clad, non-silver Washington quarter that we're so familiar with today because from 65 on, all the quarters struck for commercial use have zero silver content. Now compare that. Kim is going to show you the 64 and Proof 69. Absolutely flawless. Absolutely flawless. Beautiful coin. The last, that 1964, the last quarter struck at the old Philadelphia Mint on a 90% silver planchet, extraordinary condition, and all 10 coins, folks, just like this. These are miracle coins. These are miracle coins from all the thousands and thousands and thousands of sets we looked at. We made a fair number of Proof 68 sets, but only a handful of these sets in Proof 69. And Kim's got a pop chart showing you how rare these coins are. You could see in Proof 69, in the first year of issue, the 19, well, let's start with that at the bottom, Hector. The 64, they had the best quality at the, uh, at the Philadelphia Mint. A big improvement in quality in that last year that they made proof coins at the Philadelphia Mint. They s struck about 4 million proof coins, but only 2,200 graded in proof 69. That's a low number, 2,200 coins. But as soon as you go back one year, look at how the number drops. 1963, 741. 62, 363. 61, 315. 1960, 244. 373 for 1959, and then again, the 58, 244. 
And I showed you, in, if you missed that, our earlier presentation, the big problem in proof production from 1958 to 64 were milk spots. And I showed you a 1960, Kimberly showed you a typical 1960, or excuse me, 1958 Washington Quarter from this era. And here is one of them. I don't know if this was the exact coin. But one of the reasons that you had a couple problems uh, in the way proof coins were made were one was hairlines and the other was milk spots. And the milk spots were due to incomplete cleaning of the coin blank, incomplete washing of the coin blank, and there would be soap residue left on the blank. And you could see on that 58 quarter, soap residue left on the blank as it went into the dye. And when that dye came down with 100 tons of pressure or more, that residue was struck into the coin. And there you see a white spot right in the middle of the eagle's breast there. That is, we call it a milk spot, but that is soap residue. And on the obverse, you see several small spots. And this is the big problem with all of these coins. And a lot of times, right in the middle of uh, Washington's cheek, you may not notice it unless it's tilted at a certain angle, right in the middle of his, of his cheek. And folks, those are part of the coin. When that die comes down with all that pressure, that residue is struck into the coin. We actually had a chemical analysis done of one of these coins with these spots, and it is kind of from a, a, a soap-type residue that these spots come from. So while the, uh, the original coin is supposed to be 90% silver, these coins actually with this residue technically would be like 89.98% silver because you have 0.02%, that's this other foreign substance. These are proof 69s. You saw the population numbers. Kim's got a few comparables. Uh, here you got the most common date, the 1964. You got a top-rated seller, but that's a proof 69. A proof 69, top-rated seller, over 53,000 happy customers. A top-rated seller on eBay, $200, a very fair price. Rare 1962, 350. So those two coins right there, those two dates, $550. We take the first date of the series, the 60, 55. $450. You're at $1,000 for just those three coins. And we're not even talking about the three toughest coins. Because again, take one last look at the chart, folks. One last look at the population chart. One last look, and you'll see the 58's about 10 times rarer than the 64 and 69, as is the 1960. The, the, and the 59 and 61 are right behind. Those are your key dates, the 58 through, through the 1961 and, and include the 1962. Those are your toughest dates in Proof 69 because of the hairline problems and those milk spot problems. And here you're getting the key dates. When you've got other dealers just asking $400, $450 for dates that are tough dates, but not the rarest dates. The 55 is a tough date. 400 coins, that's a tough date. Folks, take a look at this set. Again, we've cut out all the middlemen. This has got to be a short presentation because we do not have very many of these sets. Kim, if you could just give them a couple of hand shots of these, uh, starting with the first date, the 1955, the very first year of the, of the series. Here, here you have a 1955 that's rare in any condition, they only struck 378,000 coins, only 400 graded in proof 69. Folks, you know, if I were asking $300 a coin, that would be $3,000 for the set. And that would be a very, very reasonable price. You get to under $200 a coin, say uh, 1995, you're under $200 a coin for 1995. How would you like the entire set? Again, call in now. I have a limited number of these sets. Call in now because when you hear the price, once these are gone, I don't know if I can replace these. I was, we were very fortunate to get this small group together. It's not often 
when we get the opportunity to get go through thousands and thousands of fresh, fresh, unsearched proof sets. And of the, even though they're unsearched, most of the coins, as I briefly demonstrated, are flawed. They're either hairlined or spotted. Only a handful of these sets survived in this condition. And I'm offering them today while we have them for only $94.90 a coin. In other words, $949 for the entire set. You heard me correctly. $949 in the 1958 alone should be a five six hundred dollar coin. That's one of the key dates. The 1958 and the 1960. Really, really difficult. Only 244 graded in proof 69. And you're getting the entire set. The entire set while we have them for only $949 ultimate highest grade proof coins for less than a hundred dollars a coin. Extremely rare, beautiful, extremely rare, con extraordinary condition rarity, highest quality. The three legs of the stool, folks, in spades. I always talk about the three legs of the stool to get coins with exceptional eye appeal for their date, exceptional quality, and the most rarity possible for the best possible price. And here you've got that in spades. You've got this 10 coin set, the highest matching grade possible of some beautiful, extremely rare coins for under $100 a coin. We've got a bunch of people calling in right now. I'm going to cut this presentation right here because if I carry this presentation out for five minutes longer, we, we, we would have people calling in. We, it looks like we may even have a queue. We will have people calling in, and, and we won't have any sets left. And again, I have a limited number of these sets, so I got to cut it right here. I want to be able to offer everyone a set who calls in now to take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, and again, if I carry it out, if I do this for five minutes longer, we'll get we'll, we'll be beyond sold out, and I, and I can't get any more sets at this time. So this is your chance. Please take advantage of this if you want to own something really, really special. You'll only find this kind of set here in this kind of quality at this price here on Rick's U.S. Coin Show. From Kim and I, thank you for watching. Historic Coin Press No. 1 was originally built back in 1869 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania by a company called Morgan & Orr. And the press was ordered brand new for the new mint that was going to open in Carson City in 1870. It arrived here in 1869 and then went into production and in fact it was the first and only press for the first five years here at the mint. And did the original coins, the first coin that was minted in February of 1870, a Liberty seated dollar and then followed a couple of days later producing a $20 gold piece. So it had an incredible early career. Eventually, two additional presses were added. But then in 1878, a malfunction in the press happened up in this upper area. We're not sure quite what happened, but it cracked the frame. So instead of sending the press all the way back to Philadelphia to Morgan Orr, there was a, actually, we were just two blocks away from the Virginia and Truckee Railroad workshops and they agreed to repair the press. It was taken from here to there, and they melted down this huge frame, and for some $800, incredible figure when we think about it today, they repaired the press, put it back together, and they did the one thing that made it so that the press exists today. They removed the original builder's plate here, which said or Morgan and Orr, and replaced it with their name, Virginia and Truckee Railroad Works, and they dated it Carson, Nevada, 1878. So that saved the press. It was back in use. And I want to mention they were operated with steam at that time. All the whole time the press, this press was here at this 
meant it was always operated by, a, there was a stationary steam engine out and back that created the power to operate the presses, but also some of the other equipment that they used in the minting process. When it started production in 1870, it could do 100 silver dollars in a minute. Pretty much after 1878, the only production they did in silver were Morgan dollars. They didn't do the dimes anymore, they didn't do the 20 cent pieces, the trade dollars, they just continued just to do the Morgans all the way until the mint finally closed in 1893. So that was the basic coin that they were turning out in that time period. They started off where for each press, for example, like coin press number one, it would have an operator that would be sitting here. They would start the press going, and you can imagine with that uh, producing 100 a minute, they had to be on top of things. And basically what they did, there was a tube that sat up in front. They would be sitting in a chair where I'm standing here. There would be a bin next to them that would have the blanks. And their job was to make sure that that tube was constantly filled. Now, the, the size of the blanks would depend on if they were doing silver dollars, if they were doing a dime, a 50 cent piece. So they, the idea was to keep that. So there was one individual, and I think this is an interesting point, sometimes it's overlooked, is that women were sometimes operators of the press. And they would sit here and they would do that during the day. The other part of their job that they were really known for, not so much as operators of the press, but they were the adjusters. And this table in front of me is actually an adjuster's table and they were the quality control. And you can just see where they would sit at. There would be a, a table for three on this particular one. This machine is designed to go up to 200 tons of pressure. But for example, to do a, a, a silver dollar in the uh, 1800s, it would get up to 175 tons of pressure to do that. And that would be because it's 90% silver and 10% copper. But think of that when it was doing 100 a minute, the force and the movement of this wheel here, this big wheel going around at that rate, so that it's coming up and then down, up and down so quickly. And it was high technology for its day. Actually, the Mint was very proud of its ability to do that kind of production. And then eventually, when the Mint closed here, and the last time coins were minted was 1893, and then officially the Mint closed in 1899. So it's an exciting piece of our history in the state of Nevada, but nationally, I contend it's the most significant and most unique coin press that's still in existence in the United States. I want you to see three of the most important Morgan dollars struck by the United States Mint that in terms of value for your numismatic dollar, bang for your buck, at this price, for a limited time, when you're talking about silver dollars struck over a hundred years ago, and at the Carson City Mint, the smallest mint that struck Morgan dollars with a very limited production capability. These three coins, for the price, it just doesn't get any better. Beginning with the 1878 CC, the first year the Carson City Mint struck Morgan dollars, folks. And then the next two coins in this set, they are both dated 1880. 1880. But other than the date, that is where the similarity between these two coins ends. These three coins literally would not exist, but for the fact that back in the 1960s, the United States Treasury, doing an inventory, discovered bags of Carson City Mint Morgan dollars in their original bags, like the one I'm holding here. This is an original bag from the Carson City Mint. They were in these original bags just as they had left the Mint almost 100 years earlier. I'm going to take you on a little journey. 
I'd like you to take a look at the chart of Morgan dollar mintages in descending order from the highest mintage issues to the lowest as you would have found them in this 2012 Red Book. The United States Red Book provided all the basic information for a collector of all the series, all the dates and mint marks within their series and their mintages. This was the Bible and still is for the collector of today. And if you would have taken the mintages in the 2012 Red Book, here's what you would have seen. In descending order, the highest mintage issue was the 1921, with over 44 million struck of the Morgan dollar. And this is just the first page. There are about 100 different dates and mint marks of the Morgan dollar. By the bottom of the page, we're down to about 10 million. You get to the second page, you start at almost 10 million, and at the bottom of the page, we're down to 5 million. You get down to the third page, and it's in this third page that we see our first Carson City minted Morgan dollars. Again, the Carson City mint, a very small mint with very limited capacity. The highest mintage Morgan dollar but struck by the Carson City mint is the 1890, only 2.3 million struck. And then you have the 1878 CC, 2.2 million. And then you see two other Carson City Minage dates at the very bottom. And then we get to the last page. And here you see the rest of the Carson City Minted coins, beginning with the 1883 CC, and at the very bottom, the 1885 CC, and the Morgan dollar with the very lowest mintage, with the greatest absolute rarity, 1893S Morgan dollar, with only 100,000 coins struck. These last coins at the end of this long list have what we call absolute rarity. Because of their very low mintage, they're valuable in any condition. And as you can see from the chart in this 2012 Red Book, the lowest mintage Morgan dollar was believed to be the 1893S. This was commonly shared knowledge shared in every numismatic book that referenced Morgan dollars. And if you look at the values of the 1893S Morgan dollar today, here's an 1893S in MS-63, a coin that's uncirculated. It's never seen the bottom of a cash drawer. That coin is valued over $300,000. Tremendous absolute rarity. But here's a lower grade specimen almost uncirculated, a coin that was actually in a cash drawer and spent some time in circulation and in commerce. And it's still valued at $75,000. But even when you get into the lowest grades of the 1893S, here's one extra fine. This is a coin that was used in commerce for quite some time, and it's been cleaned. It's been cleaned, it's been tampered with, and it's still valued over $13,000. Because again, tremendous absolute rarity. They only struck 100,000 pieces. It's rare in any condition. It's highly desirable, extremely valuable. And then in 2014, this landmark book on Morgan Dollars by Miles Standish was published. The book was so significant so groundbreaking in the information contained within its pages. It won the Numismatic Literary Guild's Book of the Year Award. And there, innocuously tucked away on page 47, on the 1880cc Morgan dollar, was the following paragraph which in terms of its significance to the Morgan Dollar series was a 10 on the earth-shaking numismatic Richter scale, folks. To quote from his book, of the $591,000 coins struck at the Carson City Mint in 1880, some 96,000 failed to meet legal standards when mint assayers surveyed Carson City's output. These coins were melted, which meant that the actual mintage was only 495,000 coins. But if that wasn't enough, Miles went even further. In the very next paragraph, 
just as innocuously he wrote the following. Numismatists have many varieties to consider when looking at the 1880 CC. For starters, there is the 1880 CC with the 1878 seven tail feather parallel arrow feather reverse, otherwise known as the reverse of 1878 with the flat breasted eagle, which accounts for approximately 20% of the issue's total mintage. In other words, Focusing on the lowest mintage Morgan dollars, the coins with the greatest absolute rarity, that chart would have looked like this in 2012. In this chart are all the Morgan dollars with mintages under a million. And at the top you see the 1879 CC with a mintage of 756,000. And you see the 1880 CC with a mintage of 591,000. But now, with this knowledge gained from Miles' research, this is the new Morgan dollar mintage chart for the lowest minted Morgan dollars. But now the 1880 CC has the totals with the reverse of 79, with an estimate of approximately 396,000 total struck, considerably rarer than the original estimate. And at the very bottom, you have the newest king of the lowest mintage Morgan dollars. The 1880 CC representing about 20% of the mintage of the 1880 CCs, all the 1880 CCs surviving, estimated about 99,000 or fewer struck, even rarer than the 1893S. Today, I have an extraordinary, truly once in a lifetime opportunity. This historic collection of three of the most important Morgan silver dollars struck at the Carson City Mint. The first year the Morgan dollar was struck at the Carson City Mint, the 1878 CC. The second coin, the 1880 CC with the rounded breast, originally believed to have a mintage of 591,000, but now known to have an original mintage of approximately 396,000. And finally, the last coin, now commonly accepted to have a mintage of under 100,000, the 1880 with the reverse of 78. And when you compare the two reverses of these two coins, folks, it's night and day. The 1878 CC, first year of issue, the eagle had what we refer to as the flat breast. It's actually a flat breast on the eagle's chest, and the breast feathers are carved into the eagle's chest. And then late in 1878, and for 1879 and later, they redesigned the eagle's chest and gave it a rounded, sculpted appearance. So it was three-dimensional, and the feathers overlapped and flowed over the eagle's sculpted breast. Now from 1879 on, all the Morgan dollars were supposed to have been struck with the rounded breast you see on the right. But in 1880, at the Carson City Mint, a mint employee made what at the time probably seemed like an insignificant discovery. But now, over 135 years later, would turn out to be what is likely the most important Morgan silver dollar opportunity of our lifetime. In 1880, at the Carson City Mint, without the knowledge or approval of the home mint in Philadelphia, somewhere, perhaps in one of the cupboards, perhaps sitting forgotten in the back corner of a shelf in one of their safes, perhaps they were in a drawer in the kitchen, mixed with the forks, spoons, and knives. No one knows. All we know is that in 1880, someone at the Carson City Mint found a couple unused, fresh, leftover reverse dies from 1878 with the flat breast, the first year the Morgan dollar was struck. And so they had a couple of these leftover dies. And I suppose the thought process was, why not? we now have a couple extra dies we can use to strike silver dollars this year. And so what at the time 
seemed a decision based purely on practicality and economy to use all the very limited quantity of dyes they were allotted by the Philadelphia Mint. In the end, created one of the great rarities in the Carson City series and in all of Morgan dollars. The 1880 CC, with the reverse of 1878. These three coins shouldn't even exist, folks. Here you see them. In the original GSA holder, Government Services Administration, when the government located and found these bags of Carson City dollars in, in the Treasury vaults, they decided to sell them to the general public in a huge sale in the 1970s. And they encapsulated them and guaranteed them to be uncirculated. There are very few survivors. To get any Morgan dollar in uncirculated condition is a challenge. And the Carson City minted coins are the toughest of all to find in uncirculated condition. So few have been struck. Here's an 1878 for $2,450. Here's another one for approximately $2,000. If you want one of these 1878s in the original GSA holder, I have these coins available for only $1,495. It's available on the two payment plan. If you can't swing the entire amount today, you can put half down of $747.50 and will hold one of these 1878 Carson City Morgan dollars for you and pay the balance in 30 days. And what I may not have noted yet, but what is so important is the Carson City Mint Mark on the reverse. It's unique as it is the only double mint marked Morgan dollar. The Philadelphia Mint didn't use a mint mark. The San Francisco Mint had an S. New Orleans had an O. Denver had a D. Carson City, you had the CC. Now the second coin, the 1880, with the reverse of 79, to get it in a GSA Carson City holder, guaranteed uncirculated, folks. Again, these were pulled from an original mint bag in the U.S. Treasury. Here's an 1880cc for $1,800. And it's not a GSA coin, folks. This is a GSA coin issued by the United States government guaranteed uncirculated. Then the coin is only $1,295. Also on the two payment plan, you could put half down today of $647.50. We'll hold one of these for you and pay the balance in 30 days. Now the last coin, the 1880 with the reverse of 78, Carson City, is so rare in any condition but especially in a GSA holder. It's only available as part of the set. But you'll love the price, folks, because the entire three-coin set is only $4,995 for a three-coin set that includes what is believed to be the lowest mintage Morgan dollars coin in the entire series even lower than the 1893 S, $4,995. It's available on our two payment plan as well. So just put half down today of $2,497.50 and we will hold one of these sets for you and pay the balance in 30 days. What I'm offering are some of the lowest mintage Carson City Morgan dollars in existence. Take a look at this minage chart that shows all the Morgan dollars with minages under a million. Two of the three coins are on this chart. The 1880 CC with the reverse of 79 estimated total minage of only 396,000 coins. That's the total minage, folks. A lot of those coins were melted down. Well, most of them went into circulation. But at the very bottom, you have the 1880 CC with the reverse of 78 
estimated mintage of under 100,000, making it even rarer than the 1893S in terms of the total mintage. Now, these coins, in any condition, have tremendous value because of their absolute rarity. We were most fortunate to acquire this collection that included the reverse of 78 and pass this extraordinary opportunity on to you today. The single most important question to ask when considering the purchase of a rare coin. First of all, you have to ask yourself, does the coin bring you joy? The coin should be appealing to you, an attractive coin for the date and grade that you would enjoy owning. And then when considering the purchase, the most important question to ask is, what is the potential value of this coin 10, 20 years from now? My focus has always been on the future. It's the road ahead that is most important. When driving down that road, it's good to check your rear view mirror from time to time. But most important is the road ahead for you. So my fellow collectors, when you focus on the road ahead, on the future, always remember that a coin that offers you, the collector, that unique combination of beauty, quality, and rarity, a coin that may be irreplaceable in the condition being offered, is a coin that has the greatest long-term potential. This GSA collection consisting of the first Morgan dollar ever struck at the Carson City Mint, the 1878 CC, and then the 1880 CC with the reverse of 79 that we now know, thanks to Miles Standish's seminal Morgan dollar book, we didn't know a few years ago, ranks among the lowest mintage Morgan dollars in the series, only to be outdone by this gift handed to us on a silver platter. The discovery of the 1880 CC struck with the reverse from the 1878 CC Morgan dollar, estimated to have a mintage under 100,000 coins originally struck. Guaranteed, uncirculated by the US government. Individually, you could buy the 1878 CC GSA for two payments of only $747.50 or the 1880 CC with the reverse of 79 GSA for two payments of $647.50. But get the set of three, which includes the 1880 CC with the ultra rare reverse of 1878, the entire three coin set for only two payments of only $2,400 $97.50. I sincerely hope you can take advantage of this opportunity. The 1878 CC, the 1880 CC with the reverse of 79, you get the three coin set. You have the 1880 CC with the reverse of 78, which in my opinion is worth more over the long term than the entire three coin set today. This is a great set with tremendous long-term potential. It's all about the road ahead, folks. Keep your focus on the road ahead. This set will be very, very, very good to you. Thank you for watching. There is big news, folks, major news 
coming out of NGC as I speak. I want you to take a look at this press release, an NGC major announcement. NGC is excited to announce the release of an exclusive new signature series holder from longtime Franklin expert and professional numismatist Rick Tamaska. Tamaska has been the foremost expert on Franklin and Kennedy half dollars for nearly four decades, penning multiple books and helping to bring about both the full bell line and cameo, ultra cameo designations at NGC and PCGS. In addition, Tamaska's first book identified most of the major cameo die varieties for the Franklin series. Now, when they say that first book, I've got an example right here. This was my very first book. It came out in early 1992. It was almost five years in the making, folks. It was a tremendous amount of work. But the photography of the finest proof Franklins and Kennedy half dollars and quarters, dimes, nickels, and Lincoln cents from that era was a major contribution to the United States numismatics. I mean, it's a Smithsonian caliber collection of United States proof coins, and most importantly, the Franklin half dollars from that era. And I have great news. Uh, we are doing a revised second edition of this book, which will be out within the next several months, folks. Now, the problem is NGC is recognizing all these important die varieties in the Franklin series, but there's a shortage of the books. You know, I'm, I only have a few dozen copies left. Uh, I've seen these, this book, my, my first book being offered on various websites with people asking over $1,000 for a copy. Now that blew my mind when I saw that. So what I've done, I'm in the process of offering a revised second edition of my first book, which will be out in several months. It's very exciting, uh, but the book is more relevant and more important today than ever before. So this is gonna be, a, again, for all these new collectors, they will have the opportunity to get something that hasn't been on the market for 30 years. Now let's finish up this announcement. In addition, Tamaska's first book identified most of the major cameo die varieties for the Franklin series, which NGC now also recognizes. According to Tamaska, these new NGC Tamaska signature holders include only those coins that he has personally selected. And this is the key, folks. You know, I've specialized in these coins for, again, nearly four decades. I felt, okay, I've offered these books and all this information for collectors. The last contribution, the most significant contribution I can offer the collector of today is to have a special signature series holder from NGC that recognizes only those finest Franklin half dollars for the date and grade. And that's what the signature series is all about. And here we have a blow up of one of those, a 1958, proof 68 in this pedigree holder. I call it the we the people holder because that's the first three words of our constitution, we the people. Benjamin Franklin was one of our founding fathers. Now this last paragraph is really key to help collectors appreciate the importance of these NGC Tamaska signature coins. NGC will list them separately in its NGC US coin price guide and NGC census reports. That is key folks, and we'll see it very soon on the price guide. I have a preliminary example for you as to how this is going to evolve. I sent them price guide numbers for the 1950 and the 1951 in the We the People holder in six, seven grade. Now a generic 1950 NGC, the price guide is $4,850. But a 1950 in the signature series, a coin that I have personally reviewed, is about a $6,200 coin. And then also for the 1951, whereas a generic 1951 price guide is about a $2,500 coin. Currently, a signature coin that I've reviewed is a $3,300 to $3,400 coin. 
Now, this is just the beginning, folks. We've got these other grades that in 6.8 and 6.9 for the other years, and we have all these later dates. But generally speaking, the price guide numbers will be anywhere from 20 to 50% higher than the generic numbers for these proof Franklin half dollars. If you're new to numismatics, okay, what is a proof coin? There are basically two kinds of coins struck by the United States Mint. There are coins struck for commerce, the kinds of coins we use to buy things with. It's in our pocket. Those kinds of coins are struck on high-speed presses. They're struck once, ejected into bins. They go through coin counting machines, and they're dumped into bags, and they get sent to banks around the country. So by the time you get one from the bank teller, you can have one that, a coin that's never been in circulation. But it's going to have a lot of marks and a lot of imperfections. For example, I've got a couple uncirculated 1961 Franklins, coins that never been in circulation, but they were struck for commerce. And here's a 1961. You can see a lot of marks on top of his head and in the fields, satiny surfaces, a strike that's a little weak. You can't quite see all the detail. For example, if you look at the bottom of the bell there, you can't see any of the detail at the bottom of the bell because of a, a weaker strike. Uh, this is a coin struck for commerce. These coins for st struck for commerce uh, obviously are struck in much higher numbers than proof coins. Proof coins, folks, are meant to represent the state of the art, finest possible quality the mint's able to produce given the technology of the day. Now, the mint's been striking proof coins since the early 1800s but they weren't offered to the general public until 1858. Before then, they were only offered to dignitaries, really important people. Coins that represented the state or technology in this country. And these coins I have for you today, I'd like you to take a look at these two sets that I'm offering today. The ultimate at the very top, folks, a 1956 to 1963 Franklin set Every coin in proof 69. 69 is the highest grade any Franklin has ever received. It's the ultimate. The number one set is for that collector that's looking for the finest possible quality and eye appeal. And this is a set in proof 69 from 1956 to the last year of the series, 1963. That's the last year they struck Franklin half dollars in proof 69. To get it in proof 69, folks, that is the highest grade. There are no Franklins in proof 70. Coins are graded on a 70 point scale from a low of one, which is a coin that's very heavily circulated, to a high of 70, which represents perfection. Now, when you buy the latest mint products, American Silver Eagles, Kennedy Half Dollars that have been struck over the last 20, 30, 40 years, you can find coins in Proof 70 because of the improvements in technology over the last 40 to 50 years. These Franklins, folks, this was the end of an era. When proof coins were made what I call the old fashioned way, using technologies that really were pretty much the same as they were back in the 1800s. So proof coins, key phrase, proof coins represent the state of the art for that era. And back in this early era, the making of a proof coin was a very labor intensive project. The mint took the finest dyes and they had craftsmen polishing each one of those dies by hand on a buffing wheel. And they took the coin blanks, what they called planches, and they gave them a kind of buffing treatment as well. And then most importantly, they would take those planches and slowly feed them into the die, those specially prepared polished dies, and strike them not once but twice under higher pressure to bring out every detail of the design. And then most importantly, once struck, they weren't dumped into bins like commercial strikes. They were individually handled. So during this era, they were struck in very limited numbers. Here's a comparison of the Mint State Franklin Minages to the Proof Franklin Minages. 
And 56 was the lowest mid-age year from this era for the half dollar in mid-state. They only struck 4 million examples. But you go to the later years, like 1961, where they struck 28 million versus only 3 million proofs. 45 million for 1962 from in-state with only 3 million proofs. 1963, 89 million coins, min-state, 3 million proofs. So the proof coins represented about 5% of the total minage of Franklin half dollars for that era. During this era, end of an era, the technology, the quality control, again, was like it was back in the 1800s. Most of your coins were flawed, even though they, they represented the state of the art, but the state of the art was really poor compared to, to today. Here's a 1962 set. This is an original government issue set. We called them flat packs because they came in these manila envelopes. And you got them out and they would have cardboard on the front and back. Now in this set, you can see the packaging, the coins are supposed to be in their, their individual pouches, but all the pouches have broken loose and all the coins are abrading with one another. And you can see how heavily toned the half dollar is. Now here's one where the coins are still in their individual holders and it looks like a pretty nice set. It looks like a pretty nice set. You might call it a gem set, really nice. Like all the coins have a beautiful original finish as struck. But let's cut the 1962 Franklin out of here. We, we can take a better look at this coin. And folks, I gotta tell you, over the decades, I've looked at literally, they, they issued about 18 million proof Franklins. I think I probably looked at maybe four or five billion of those coins, all right? <laughs> I've looked at more Franklins than any other person on the planet. So we cut it out, and it is a pretty nice coin. But when we look closer, look at the spotting around seven, eight o'clock off of the back of Franklin's portrait. That's spotting from incomplete washing of the coin blank before it went into the dye. The coin blank that went into the dye had soap residue left on the blank from the cleaning process. And when the die came down with 200 tons of pressure, that residue was struck into the coin. Here's a 1956. The biggest problem, even a bigger problem than the spotting, were what we call hairlines, light scratches from abrasion with other surfaces. You look closely, and the camera's able to pick some of them up, but you can see those very light scratches over the surface of the coin. Today, I have a limited time offer on the choice of one of two Franklin sets, one in the highest grade, Proof 69, and then I have the same set in Proof 67. I don't have the 68s because I gave a presentation on those several weeks ago, and we sold all the 68s. So I can't offer a complete 6-8 set. But what I haven't done is given a presentation on the 6-9 and 6-7 sets, like you see here in this We the People pedigree holder. Now you look at the rarity of these coins, and I've been reviewing these coins now for a few years. And I've looked at, again, I see more of the nicest Franklins than any other person in the country. And here you see the populations. If you look on the NGC population guide, you'll see the populations of the coins in the set I'm offering today highlighted in red. And you can see those earlier dates. I mean, some of the dates are non-existent, folks, in proof 69. Even 68, they're virtually impossible, like the 1950. Again, this was the end of an era. The last series struck entirely in 90% silver using these older technologies, using packaging that is, was really primitive. So you could see, beginning with the 1956, that's the high point of the decade. The 1956 didn't have the problem with milk spots that the later issues had. The quality was exceptional. And I've certified around 300 examples in Proof 69. But then you get to the 57, considerably more difficult, 138. 
But then every coin after that, because of the problem with milk spots, with hairlines, they're extremely rare. 52 coins for the 1958. 53 for the 1960. The finest Franklins have been going for record prices over the last several years, folks. I mean, there was an auction not too long ago, in 1958, it was a mint state coin, a six, seven plus, a mint state coin. The hammer price was 110,000. You add the auction fee onto it, the final price was in the range of $129,000. Now, some comparables to show you what dealers are asking lower grade proofs for. Here's a proof 66, $189. Again, I'm, I'm taking top rated dealers here, dealer with 100% positive feedback. I'm gonna go through these really quickly. Here's another 1956 in proof 67, $245. Here's another proof 67, $269, a dealer with 100% positive feedback, over 15,000 happy customers. Here's a proof 67, 1957, $450. Here's a 58, this is an ICG, okay? ICG, we, we only offer NGC and PCGS graded coins. We don't offer ICG graded coins. They still want $300 for that coin. Here's a 1960, $210. 1961, $595. 62, $379. 63, basically $400. Here's a couple higher grade specimens. A 1956, proof 69. Again, that's the most common date in this set in 69, $774. I just pulled these off the, the internet just today, folks. All right, these are just brand new prices. 1957 and proof 68, over $1,700. Here's what I have for you today. The proof 69s. If you want to get individual coins, beginning with the 1956. Now, regarding the Proof 69s, if you don't want to acquire the complete set and just want to acquire individual dates in this set, there is a limit of one date per caller. Because I have very limited numbers of most of these dates, like the 1958, the 59, the 60, the 61, the 62, the 63, even the 57. I have more 56s but that's the only date I have in any kind of quantity where I have more than 20 coins. The 56 I have is only $495. Again, this is in the pedigree holder, which will have its own pricing in the NGC price guide. The 1957, if you just wanna get the 1957, again, only 138 certified, it's $595. The 1958, one of the toughest dates in the series when you get to these later Franklins. Huge problems with milk spots and hairlines. A proof 69 is really rare. I've only certified 52 examples. This coin is $1,395. 59, many of the same problems. I've only certified 66 examples. It's also $1,395. The 1960. A proof 69 is basically a coin that's flawless to the eye. The process at NGC is to study every one of these coins under magnification. If under their normal magnification, the coin looks flawless, they then take it and put it under higher magnification. If under that higher magnification, they see the tiniest flaw, it gets a grade of proof 69. And that is the highest grade any Franklin has ever received. And they are so rare like this. This 1960 folks, only 53 certified to date. The coin is only $1,050. Again, that ever selection seal, Every coin reviewed by me in this pedigree holder. The 1961, only 57 certified, $950. The 
the 1962, only 47 certified, $750. And the last coin in the series, the 1963, only $675. In October of 1963, President Kennedy was tragically assassinated. Congress passed emergency legislation in December of 1963 and authorized the striking of the half dollar in 1964 to be of the Kennedy design. So the Franklin series, which was supposed to run into the early 1970s, was ended prematurely in 1963. If you add up all the prices on every coin that I just gave you, it comes to $7,305. And those are great prices, again, these are pedigree Franklins that I have personally selected that represent the ultimate eye appeal and quality for their date and grade. If you get the set though, folks, you can get the entire set for only $5,995. That's a savings of over $1,300 or over 15% off the individual coin prices. $5,995, most importantly, while it's a great, great opportunity, it's still a lot of money. We have a three payment option. Put $1,998.33 down and we'll hold one of these sets for you. And that is so very, very important because I have a very limited number of these sets in six, nine. So we'll hold one of these sets for you, put your name on it, put it in our vault. You make the second payment in 30 days, the final payment in 60 days. And you will own the highest grade Franklin set possible from 1956 to 1963. And I will throw in as a bonus, the third edition of the guidebook of Franklin and Kennedy half dollars published by Whitman and it'll be hand signed. Now, Owning the ultimate is most collectors' dreams. I mean, that's always been my dream as a collector. I've always wanted to own the best. But if you can't swing the best, this is an opportunity to own a set of amazing quality, amazing rarity, at really a bargain price, because we have these Proof 67s, folks. Now, these Proof 67s, again, this pedigree holder is so critical. Let me show you some of the coins that I've reviewed that don't go into the pedigree holder. And they're all proof 67s. The 1960 I reviewed, it was graded and proof 67 by NGC. But again, my goal for the collector of today is to give you the very finest possible eye appeal and quality for the date and grade. And while the coin is a solid 67, you can see the small milk spot right above the word God at Franklin's bust at the bottom. That really detracts from the eye appeal, so it doesn't go into the pedigree holder. Here's another example, 1962. I've circled the spot you can see there on Franklin's forehead. Finally, here's a, a 1954, an earlier date, and I've removed the cover so you could see, get a better view of the coin, proof 67 but you can see the unattractive toning that is so common on Proof Franklin's, again, because of the packaging. These are the kind of coins that don't go into the pedigree holder. Now, these Proof 67s I have for you today, folks, again, it's so important. The prices for these coins are not based on what the market will bear, they're based on my cost. I've specialized in these coins for just about 40 years. I get some opportunities to get some phenomenal Franklin's at some great prices, and I get to pass it on to you today. Now you saw what dealers are offering these coins in 6.6 and 6.7 grades for. If you want the 67s, starting with the 1956, it's only $119. Not $260 or $175, $119. The 1957, where dealers are asking three, four, four hundred fifty dollars for, I have for a hundred nine dollars. The 1958, a key date. It's only a hundred twenty nine dollars.
The 59, key date. Again, because of all the spotting and hairline problems, look at this coin. These are flawless to the eye. These are the finest possible proof 67s, no haze, no spotting. They're incredible eye appeal and quality. This is what my pedigree is all about when I review these coins. This coin is only $119. Nineteen sixty. You have dealers asking two hundred, three hundred dollars for nineteen sixties in proof sixty seven. And here we have the pedigree nineteen sixty, a hundred and nine dollars. The nineteen sixty one dealers asking three, four, five hundred and ninety five dollars for a proof sixty seven. $79, again, based on my cost. And then the 1962, only $79. The 1963, dealers asking three, $400 for 1963s and proof 67, I have for $79. Now, those are great prices. We're talking about proof coins, beautiful proof coins. To find a 1958 like this, it's one of the lowest quality coins in the series, folks. Spotting is a major problem. So pristine, black mirrors coming from highly polished dyes, folks. Obverse and reverse. Here's your typical proof 1958. Overall, this is one of the lowest quality dates in the series, struck after 1953. And you can see all the spotting. There's a black spot at 8 o'clock, a milk spot right above the date. This is your typical 1958. And here you're getting a proof 67 for only $129. But here's the best part of all. If you get the set, I had it at $749 for the set with a copy of my book, hand-signed. But I did the numbers, and I said, you know, if I gave them 10% off, that would be $739.80. And so that was my goal. So let's hit that 10% number. So for the first time ever, I've got this entire set in the pedigree holder, which again, it has independent NGC price guide numbers and census numbers for $739 with the book, folks. This is a great opportunity. Here you have the last series struck on 90% silver planchets, struck in this earlier era, really the stone age in proof making. To get them in proof 67, everyone hand selected for the finest possible eye appeal and quality for the date and grade. I've written many books on proof coins. But this is a most important legacy that I want to leave collectors of today and future generations. When I review these Franklin half dollars and they get a collector of the future, say 50 years from now, gets a Franklin in one of my pedigree holders, they will know that they have one of the finest Franklins in existence in the date they're acquiring that coin in. Because I personally reviewed it for the best eye appeal and quality for the date and grade. I put it all on the line, folks. I mean, this is a labor of love. The work I go into reviewing these coins and then to pass all my knowledge, all that work, pass it on to you at prices based on my cost. So the entire set, only $739. Now, if you want to get more than one of the sets in Proof 67, I have a three set offer where you can get three of the sets for $2,190. Now that's not a huge savings, it's $27, but it brings the set price down to $730. And it's available on the two payment option, just put half down today of $1,095, and we'll hold three of these sets for you folks. Think about that. Three sets, 1956 to 1963, the end of an era, 
these incredibly rare pedigree coins, basically for $91.25 a coin if you get the three set offer. But if you just get the one set at $739, less than $100 a coin for the finest possible proof 67s. Now I make presentations on later Kennedy half dollars in high grade proof condition. I make presentations on American Silver Eagles in proof 70. Well, American Silver Eagles, again, that's a modern era. They're, they began striking those coins in 1986 with advanced technologies. This early era, this end of an era, folks, when they were struck at the old Philadelphia Mint using those old technologies. To get these coins in proof 67, you're talking about incredible rarity, incredible eye appeal, incredible value. $739 for the Proof 67 set. And again, that ultimate set on top there, the Proof 69s that I have in limited quantity. If you wanna get the individual dates in this set, there's a limit of one coin per caller for individual dates because of the limited quantities. But again, I've got a special complete set price of only $5,995 for this top of the line highest grade proof 69 Franklin set in the pedigree holder. So I've got two great sets to offer you. Top of the line, highest possible grade proof 69 sets. But then these proof 67 sets, which are amazing eye appeal and quality. And that's what it's all about. Getting the best possible eye appeal, quality and rarity for your numismatic dollar. And that's what this set offers a collector of today. I hope you can take advantage of it. The last series struck in 90% silver at the old Philadelphia Mint, the end of an era in these amazing Proof 67 and Proof 69 grades. So I've got to close this out. I have a limited number of those six, nine sets. The six, seven sets, I have a limited number of those as well. But while I have them, I have that three set special on the sets in Proof 67. This is a great way to start collecting. If you've never bought a United States rare coin before, this is the perfect era, the perfect time to get some amazing proof coins, extremely high quality, pedigree coins reviewed by me. Folks, this is about passing my legacy on to you. And I'm doing it at a great, great introductory offer price to get you started off on the right foot. I hope you can take advantage of it. Thank you for watching. I have one of the most unique and innovative coin designs in all of US history available tonight. A coin design that is so difficult to implement, it was only done once in all of US history. The design I'm of course talking about is the Indian head design that was eventually used on the $5 and $2.5 gold pieces. The specific coin that I have available tonight is the $5 Indian Head Half Eagle, designed by Bila Lion Pratt. Before I go into the story and rarity of this exact coin, I want to take you all on a journey through the eyes of Bila Lion Pratt, a coin designer that has, until today, not received the proper recognition that he deserves. Mr. Pratt was an up-and-coming American sculptor that is responsible for being involved with creating some of the most beautiful art pieces known in this country. He was responsible for crafting the Augustus St. Gardens' statue of Diana, 
carving the spandrels above the main entrances to the Library of Congress and creating what is arguably one of the most beautiful renditions of victory in the form of a wing liberty for the USS Massachusetts. Mr. Pratt was a student and understudy for Augustus St. Gaudens. The two men worked closely with each other for about 15 years. Now, in the year 1904, after Theodore Roosevelt won his presidency, he wasted little to no time in starting what we all refer to as the Renaissance of US coinage. President Roosevelt, partnering with Augustus St. Gaudens, set out to revitalize all American coins struck. In a famous letter that he wrote to the Secretary of the Treasury, Mr. Shaw, in 1904, President Roosevelt said this, My dear Secretary Shaw, I think our coinage is artistically of atrocious hideousness. Would it be possible, without asking the permission of Congress, to employ a man like St. Gaudens to give us a coinage that would have some beauty? Sincerely yours, Theodore Roosevelt. This letter, which is now better known as the Genesis letter, is again the single event that kicked off a world-class collaboration between our government and its best artists of the country. After the success our country had with the $10 and $20 gold pieces that had been redesigned and released in the year 1907, President Theodore Roosevelt set his eyes on redesigning the $2.5 and $5 gold pieces next. After the St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle and $10 gold pieces were released, many people started talking about the designs quite a bit, including Mr. Bella Lyon Pratt and his assistant. They were discussing how they would have designed the coins, envisioning sinking the relief on the coin. Shortly after this spurt of genius, they abandoned the idea as being too radical a change for it to be accepted by the Mint. Now, shortly after that, Dr. William Sturgis Bigelow, a very famous art collector in the US who was very close friends with Theodore Roosevelt, approached Mr. Pratt to potentially start creating a brand new coin design. Bela Lyon Pratt wasted no time after being asked to create this design, with his very first clay model being made within days after meeting Dr. Bigelow. He envisioned our coins to have a sunken relief. Instead of punching out the fields of the coin to get all the design elements popped out of the piece, we punched in the design elements so that the fields end up being the high points of the coin. This particular design, again, was only used once for the $5 and $2.5 Indian head gold pieces. Now, on February 2nd of 1908, Bila writes to his mother talking about how excited he is about his new coin design. This is actually a very famous letter that I believe has never been shared on television, and I'm so excited to share it with you all today. Mr. Pratt writes this, I've gotten the coin model very well along, and it has worked out very nicely. I can't believe that those in authority can possibly fail to see that it is just what we have all been looking for. It really looks very handsome to me, and everybody to whom I have shown it says that it is the best ever. I wish you could see it just to help out in the general excitement and give me the courage to see the thing through. Do you suppose that I will really take it to Washington and show it to Teddy? I don't think there is any use in just sending it. There are too many ways that it would get sidetracked, which is just what is most likely to happen to it anyhow. This letter right here, again, really talks about how excited Mr. Bela Lyon Pratt was about his brand new creation. Something that before it became a reality was really just a dream for him. Having a coin with an innovative finish, with an iconic design that, again, until today, has never been done again. Just a few months after this letter that I just shared with you, the $2.5 and $5 gold pieces were finally put into production.
Now, the $5 Indian Head Half Eagle was produced between the years 1908 and 1929. Between those years, a total of 23 different issues were released among the various dates and mints. In modern day, apart from these coins being so unique and innovative, they are revered as being some of the rarest vintage gold pieces anyone can ever acquire. And even when compared to the $20 gold piece that Augusta St. Gaudens designed during the same era, these pieces have less than half the average mintage. Right here, I'm highlighting the $5 Indian head as well as the $20 St. Gaudens gold double eagle. As you can see here for the $5 Indian head, the average mintage per issue stands at 578,000 examples. And right beneath it, to compare it to its $20 counterpart designed and produced in the same era, the $20 St. Gaudens Gold Double Eagle has an average mintage per issue of over 1.3 million coins. Now, let's talk about the specific piece that I have tonight. The 1915 P Indian Head $5 gold piece, certified in mint state 62 condition. And this coin is one of the most jaw-dropping examples of a vintage gold piece that any collector can obtain. From the fact that it has that iconic incused finish, to the fact that this is the only coin design that features an actual Native American on the obverse. We've had other pieces that have had Indian headdresses on Lady Liberty, but we've never had a coin to feature an actual Indian design on it. This is the first of its kind. On top of all of that, these coins are so exceptionally rare, especially for the money that you'll end up paying for it. This is a chart highlighting for the entire $5 Indian head series, how few of these have survived in mint state condition. So across the 23 different issues in the series, they produced a little over 13 million examples. Of those, between NGC and PCGS combined, in all mint state grades, less than 2% of all coins have survived and been certified in mint state condition. That is ridiculously low. These were all workhorse coins pieces that people used every single day as a form of currency, where the $20 piece was used more from bank to bank transactions, the $5 piece was the common man's currency, something that people kept in their pockets, used in circulation, and for that reason, so few have survived in mint state condition today. Now, take a look at the production of the 1915 P Indian, the coin we have tonight, the total mintage of this coin is only 588,000 examples. That's during a day and age where coins made for circulation very often had mintages in the millions, if not tens of millions. And what's even more impressive is the fact that in mint state 62 condition, the current grade, there are only about 5,300 examples that have been certified between NGC and PCGS combined. That is less than 1% of all coins minted that have survived in this condition. Now, I do want to share with you all what a mint state coin is and what owning a mint state 62 means. We grade coins on what is called the Sheldon scale. The Sheldon scale is a 70 point grading scale used to identify the condition and of any given coin. On the Sheldon scale, you can get a grade of as low as a one, which is an example that is so worn out, you can even barely read the grade. And then on the higher end of the spectrum, you have a coin that is graded in 60 or better condition. When something gets a grade of a 60 or better, that's an example that has never circulated. Now, a 70 would be an absolutely perfect coin, but coins from this era never survive in 70 condition. After these coins are struck, they're all dropped into bins and bags, all on top of each other, and the clinking and clanking alone results in several marks on the piece that drop it down to very low mint state grades. To get it in mint state 62 condition is so 
difficult to do. A mint state 62, again, is a piece that has never circulated. It's a coin that has never been inside a bank drawer. It has never been inside a cash register. Something that was stored preciously for collectors to be able to enjoy today. And that's exactly what we have available tonight. This iconic coin design, designed by one of our premier sculptors at the time, Mr. Bila Lyon Pratt, in mint state 62 condition. And these are all coins that are so highly treasured, you will not believe the kind of prices that we see for this coin out in the market. I have a few comps I would like to share with you all. Here's an example of a 1915p $5 Indian head certified in mint state 62 condition that sold for $1,725. Over here, not every single auction record has pictures. This particular one, as you can see here, is a 1915 Indian head $5 gold piece in mint state 62 condition that sold for $2,070. Here's an example, again, an Indian head $5 gold piece from 1915 in mint state 62 condition that sold for just under $3,000. Now for this coin, I'm so excited to share with you all that not only do we have a group large enough for everyone watching to be able to enjoy at least one coin, I'm also excited to share with you all that everyone watching will not have to pay anywhere near $3,000 for this piece you will not even have to pay $2,000 for this piece. The examples we have available tonight are yours for only $1,395. For $1,395, you can own an example of one of the most iconic and the single most innovative coin designs in all of US history. These pieces are so treasured by collectors. And the fact that we have a group this large for people to enjoy is really difficult to do. While it's available, while you're watching tonight, I encourage everyone to take advantage of these pieces. A sunken relief is again, a relief where it has the design elements punched into the planchet so that all of the fields of the coin stick out of the planchet. This design was only used from 1908 through the year 1929. And if you take a look at the reverse of this coin, you might notice a very familiar design on the reverse. The reverse of this piece features the same standing eagle design that was used not only on the $10 Indian designed by Augusta St. Gaudens, but also on the inaugural medal that Augusta St. Gaudens designed for Theodore Roosevelt's presidency in the year 1905. It is such an iconic design, they brought it back with the $5 gold piece in that ink finish. Now, a few more things that I wanna point out with this coin. As you can see here, this has no rim. It is actually the only coin ever struck in US history that is lacking a rim. And the reason they did that is because given that this coin had a sunken relief and the field were all the high points, it stacked very nicely on top of each other without tarnishing the fields and surfaces of the coin. They did not need a rim given how innovative this coin design was to begin with. This piece has so much design packed into it. Whenever I heard that we got this group in, I was so ecstatic. These coins, being as innovative as they are, are also extremely difficult to grade. One of the most difficult types of coins to certify are ones in the $5 and $2.5 series with an incused or sunken relief finish. With incused finish coins, given that the highest points are the fields of the coin, it presents a very difficult challenge for graders. They have to not only inspect the fields of the coin, which are all the high points, but also dig deeper and look at the design itself that is sunken into the planchet. And given that it's sunken into the planchet, it does not wear out as easily as a traditional relief coin would. I can't stress enough how amazing this coin design really is. I advise everyone watching tonight to take advantage of what is definitively one of the most innovative coin designs ever made in this country. And for those of you who are putting together your legacy collection, like many clients of ours at the advisory team, 
This is the kind of piece that goes into each and every one of your children or grandchildren's collection. The kind of coin that you could marvel at and wish it would come back. It's been a long time since we've had an Incus coin. Maybe the Mint will excite us again in the future, but as it stands, this is the only version of this design that you can get. So call in now and take advantage while we have examples available. This is Sarah. Sarah is smart. She stays connected with Rick's US Coin Show because she signed up for our weekly email update. She gets the latest info on Rick's picks, Jack's coin suggestions, videos, numismatic fun facts, and more. So go to rarecollectiblestv.com and sign up for our weekly email update. There's no obligation, and you can opt out at any time. Be smart. Be like Sarah. Go to rarecollectiblestv.com and sign up now. The following is a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC.